Good morning. morning. Today we offer our Eucharist for an assumption for Gerardo and Gerarda Tuillo, for Gerarda Norcia, and all souls in purgatory, especially for FOSS members. And at St. Alphonsus at noon, the Mass will be offered for Blanche Tien, the Tien and Egan family, and by Catherine Ann McIsaac, on the fourth anniversary of her death. Our entrance antiphon, look to your covenant, O Lord, and forget not the life of your poor ones forever. Arise, O God, and defend your cause, and forget not the cries of those who seek you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In order to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sinfulness and remember that God is a God of kindness and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God, for you have stumbled because of your iniquity. Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, Take away all guilt, accept that which is good, and we will offer the fruit of our lips. Assyria shall not save us, We will not ride upon horses. We will say no more, our God, to the work of our hands. In you the orphan finds mercy. I will heal their disloyalty. I will love them freely, for my anger has turned from them. I will be like the dew to Israel. He shall blossom like the lily. He shall strike root like the forest of Lebanon. His shoots shall spread out. His beauty shall be like the olive tree, and his fragrance like that of Lebanon. They shall again live beneath my shadow. They shall flourish as a garden. They shall blossom like the the vine. Their fragrance shall be like the wine of Lebanon. O Ephraim, what have I to do with idols? It is I who answer and look after you. I am like an evergreen cypress. Your faithfulness comes from me. Those who are wise understand these things. Those who are discerning know them. In the upright, for the ways of the Lord are right, and the upright walk in them, but transgressors stumble in them. The word of the Lord.
My mouth will declare your praise. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. My, my mouth, mouth will, will declare, declare your praise. praise. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. My mouth will declare <laughs> your, your praise. praise. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Ha my, my mouth, mouth will, will declare, declare your, your praise. praise. Restore me, restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. My, my mouth, mouth will, will declare, declare your, your praise. praise. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, See, I am sending you like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time, for it is not you who speak but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next, for truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise I'm going to try taking this off for the homily so it's not muffled. One of my, I've mentioned before, one of my heroes, as it were, is a man named Sami Awad, a Christian originally from Jerusalem who lives in Bethlehem. And he is the founder and recently retired director of an organization called the Holy Land Trust, where they teach nonviolence and reconciliation. It's a really powerful, powerful experience to meet Sammy and hear his story and see the work that Holy Land Trust does. But Sammy says, he got interested in nonviolence because he was still like an adolescent or, or just a pre-adolescent, and his, one of his uncles was put on trial for nonviolent protests. And he said he ended up being deported from Israel because of that. And he realized that <clears throat> the authorities were more afraid of nonviolence than they were of violence. Because with violence, you know how to respond. You hit me, I hit you. But without violence, there's this, there's this real fear, like how do you respond? And how do you assert your authority if the other one refuses to react? In recent years, 
scripture scholars are saying more and more that, that Jesus taught nonviolence. And, and that's what I see in this gospel. It's like, you're like sheep in the midst of wolves. You're tender, you're compassionate, you're nonviolent, and all of these people are gonna get you because of that, because they don't know how to react to you. And that's the challenge for me as well. Uh, right now there's in the United States especially, but really worldwide, yesterday I heard a story about in Belgium, this whole Black Lives Matter thing. And I know there are some abuses and there are some problems, but the, the root of that is a nonviolent protest to say that there is a segment of our society that has been marginalized and that is at risk. And they're, pro they're, they're protesting nonviolently with a few exceptions that are horrible. I, I, I don't deny that. And we don't know how to respond to them. So often we respond with pepper spray and we respond with um, all these other things that, that our, our governments use because they don't know how to respond to nonviolence. And that's the challenge for me, is that whoever, however, whatever situation arises that I need to address, that I need to confront, that I react as Jesus would and as the first Christians would, with nonviolence, with compassion, with what we hear in the first reading, this beautiful thing that over and over we hear it in Hosea, it said, it's like return to the Lord your God. It doesn't matter how many times you screw up, keep returning and God will keep forgiving. And that's my challenge and my, my prayer is that we keep returning, that we keep Jesus as our model and every time that we screw up, we remember that there is forgiveness and there is life awaiting us. As we turn our hearts and our minds to our loving God, we pray for our church leadership we pray for Pope Francis, for Bishop Fabro, for so many charged with leadership roles that during this time of pandemic and protests across the world that they teach us always to respond as Jesus would and that they make decisions that are for the greater good of the Christian community and the world at large. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for our government leaders that they too be open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit and make wise decisions. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are ill, those suffering from COVID, from cancer, from so many other maladies, that they may be touched by God's healing comfort. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who suffer in other ways from COVID, from economic distress, from domestic violence, from uncertainty about their future, that they may know God's peace, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the intentions of our Mass, and that God may look with favor upon us, we pray to the Lord. And we take a moment to add our own needs in silence. For all these we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear these prayers and all that we make to you, for we make them through him who is our life, Christ Jesus our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, Lord, in your sacrifice, which some days we will pay you. Wash away my iniquities, Lord, and cleanse me from my sins. Sisters and brothers, pray with me that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald Peter, our bishop, with Joseph, his auxiliary bishop, and all the, all the ministers of your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon. O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord who gives you your fill of finest wheat.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Before leaving a couple of announcements, one I forgot to mention in the prayer of the faithful, but I was praying at Mass as well. We've had two deaths from our parish yesterday. Charlie Rose, longtime uh, father of Michelle Bergeron and longtime president of the Blessed Sacrament, St. Vincent de Paul Society, so keep him in your prayer. And Vincent Bougea, a faithful parishioner every Saturday evening right over there. So we keep them in our prayer. And the big news, take this down. Uh, a week from, I mean, to Monday, we move into the chapel for weekday mass. So we can, we can seat 19 people in the chapel. We have to separate. It's, uh, that's, that's a maximum. If we have the kind of numbers we're having here, there will be no problem at all. If we get more people because it's air conditioned and comfortable, uh, we may, it may end up having to be first come, first serve, but we can fit 19 people in. And uh, right now they're looking at Monday to start scaffolding work in here as they begin phase two, which is the plaster. So, yes, Bernie. No, no, okay, there's no holy hour today, okay. And there is the Friday night mass in its holy name of Mary now for the uh, uh, Blue Army, for the Fatima at seven o'clock at holy name of Mary. It's there instead of here because of the numbers. Uh, a lot more people can fit there. The Lord be with you. May almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.